Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, what's up? You're either very excited for this video or it's just whatever to you. Either way, I don't really give a shit. Without a doubt, in my exceptionally small mind, the Olympus XA has been requested more than any other camera to review on this channel. I'm serious, it's been DM'd to me so much that the FBI guy rifling through my inbox is probably ready to kill himself. I mean, I get it, it's a unique camera. There isn't a lot like it. So, like a prostate exam, let's just get this over with with a smile on our faces. Here it is, the Olympus XA that I borrowed from my friend Caleb, who, as it turns out, is borrowing it from someone else and I'm sure the trash can will soon be borrowing it from me. It's not that bad. Uh, for starters, it shoots full frame 35 millimeter film, not half frame. Let's see how well that works out for Pentax. I mean, Olympus. Boom, exterior shitty desert location, raining or whatever. Well, here we are. We've made it to uh, make out point. After struggling to find the button to open the camera because us guys can never find the button. I decided to load it up with some FPP X2, which is basically the same thing as Cinestill BWXX. I would say on a scale of one to like 420, it's about a 400 on the difficulty scale of loading. But then again, I'm an American and have basically Twinkies for fingers. So loading film in a very confined space is basically equivalent to diffusing a bomb. But you already know, daddy eventually got the job done and uh, it was time to shoot. The cool thing about the XA is that the ISO is customizable on this camera. You can push, pull, overexpose, underexpose, and of course, the classic, forget to change the ISO completely. The uh, f***ed up part is that the ISO only goes to about 800. I guess, sure, whatever. It covers most of the film stocks that are available today, but like the high speed films are sometimes kind of where it's at. Actually, most of the time, that's where I'm at. It does kind of uh, forego the chance of pushing something like HP5 to 1600, or like maybe even Portra 400 to 6400 if that's your jam, you fucking idiot. Sorry that my uh, Band-Aid finger is front and center. Believe me, it looks a lot worse underneath the Band-Aid. Probably the most important question, how are the photos? They're good, they're decently sharp for such a compact camera, which only proves that great things can come in small packages. Take that, my high school girlfriend who dumped me because I told her I was packing 35 millimeters and not the film format. I wonder what this was. I'll let you know if I ever figure it out. I guess if I were to lodge a complaint about this camera, it would be that I hate the aperture design on this. It's diamond shaped. I mean, I guess they had to make some design compromises, but it does mean that you will get diamond shaped bokeh. I never really shoot shallow or wide open, so this complaint is kind of baseless, but doesn't mean I don't hate it anyway. If I drop this camera in there, I gotta go in after it. I don't really wanna do. Okay, so this camera is automatic exposure, sort of. It's really aperture priority, which means you pre-select the aperture you'd like to use here on the side, and then the camera itself chooses a shutter speed for you based on the available light. So that's actually pretty cool. And of course, the, uh, the viewfinder threatens you with what shutter speed it's planning on using, so you can open up or close down the aperture to increase or decrease the shutter speed if you'd like. It's uh, right up my alley. Good job, Olympus. Always able to find the toilets. This is kind of a nice shot right here. No dick graffiti. It's good work. 
While we're on the topic of apertures, the lens that this camera is packing is a solid 35mm f2.8. Very good in most situations, except wide open. Kind of. It's not unusable wide open, it just, you know, gets a little soft and I guess flary and vignette -y. Actually, I did find that a lot of the apertures I used on this camera did have some sort of vignette, so it's a little inescapable. Anyway, after finally finding God just down the road, but he was on his lunch break, we popped out and shot a little bit as it began to rain on us. Is the Olympus XA waterproof? Who knows? And who cares? It's not my camera, but probably not, no. Alright, we're at 500. Let's close down. F11. I'd say the one thing that everybody talks about on this camera is its size. It is very small. Like my paint, honestly, ergonomically, this camera might be too small. Sure, it'll easily fit into your pocket, but at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a big guy. I eat a lot. I'm American, after all. And this camera isn't always the easiest to use in my big-ass cholesterol hands. Perhaps I'll get used to it over time, or I don't know. Perhaps they could have made a slightly bigger version for Americans. Frankly, my dog takes bigger and more impressive crafts than this. That's the freaking shot. All right, here we go. Now we're in business. Where are we at? One, one twenty-fifth. Was this shot the business? No, it sucks. To be honest, I would have loved to shoot this with an orange filter to neutralize and darken the clouds a bit. That's kind of one of the downsides of this camera, at least for me. You can't really use filters with it, unless you're this cowboy. Am I out? Yeah, I need to reload. After the uh, X2 was out, I put in some Cinecell 800T that must have been manufactured sometime around the Great Depression Dust Bowl era because goddamn, I must have spent 800 hours painting all that dust out. Whatever though, at least I could shoot the roll at 400 in the camera by lying to it about ISO, which is kind of a rare feature on compact cameras. talking about a lot of negatives on this camera and to be honest it's not 100% warranted maybe just like 99% but speaking of warrants there will definitely be one out for my arrest after I commit total manslaughter on these images is what I wish I could say truth is these shots are pretty mid they feel soft vignette and just I guess overall lacking the passion but let's talk about the positives and there is one huge one this tiny little camera is a rangefinder. That's right, it's not an autofocus camera, it's manual. You gotta confirm the focus yourself by rubbing and tugging the knob, something that you're probably familiar with. The rangefinder in the viewfinder is, it's okay, it's decent. It's not the brightest and it can be almost kind of invisible at times. Get that focus right, if I can find it. In some cases I have found that I have to uh, move the rangefinder around a little bit sometimes to see the, um, you know, the overlaid ghost image. Additionally, for some totally bad sh insane reason. The X-A2 and X-A3, the follow-up versions of this camera, the X-A, they removed the rangefinder and instead decided to rely on scale focusing. We'll see how well that works out for you, Pentax. I mean, Olympus. Still raining. I like this shot, but I do not want this sign in here. It's a little too colorful. One of the things that I'm really growing to dislike about automatic point shoots is that sometimes for absolutely no reason at all other than like alien solar flares, telepathic Bigfoot, who the f knows? A lot of autofocus cameras will just, uh, they'll just miss focus and there's really no way to confirm in the moment. With a camera like this that has built in focus confirmation through a rangefinder, you'll be able to rest a little bit easier knowing it was you who f***ed up the focus all along and not the accursed machine. Anyway, this sign was really cool, and this shot is honestly, it's pretty good. Sure, I had to stand in the middle of the street and get honked at by drivers who either wanted to fight me or f*** me, but it was worth it. Ooh, it is cold out here on the dusty range. Anyway, with nightfall approaching and us being smack dab in the middle of 
class A narcotics country. We got the hell out of there and landed ourselves a lover's suite in Barstow for the night, which I recently found out was one of the most dangerous cities in America. I believe in you. Got my food, but I uh, can't eat it yet because Caleb hasn't got his. This photo is actually good, besides the weird light leaks. I like the colors and the mood it brings, and it must have been shot at like 2.8, so maybe I take back what I said about softness wide open after all. The next day was another sunny day in paradise, so we took the opportunity to check out some of the exotic locale. Here we go, making uh, something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. Trust this ramp in the rain. This is really not safe. <laughs> Some of these photos are good for sure. The colors and whatnot are solid, but there are a few little hiccups with the XA we should touch on a little bit further. It is really easy for some reason to shoot photos crooked with this camera. Basically all my shots came back to me slightly non-level. Now maybe it's possible I've been partially blinded from years of alcohol consumption or maybe more likely it's just a common issue with a lot of rangefinders because you're not actually you know seeing through the lens. Shit, I mean I do have kind of the same problem on my Mamiya 7. Please don't break. Please don't break. This shutter button is very sensitive. Furthermore, the uh, the shutter button on this thing is so goddamn sensitive. I mean, what is it, my nipples or something? I'm not sure if it's every model or just the one I was using, but I ended up shooting at least like six photos accidentally between rolls. I will say the nice thing about this camera is that as soon as you open the clamshell here, the camera's like basically ready to go. It's it's metering. You don't need to half press the, uh, the shutter button or anything. However, I have found that simply resting your finger on the shutter temporarily is enough to upset the damn thing and cause it to fire sometimes. For when you want to partner next to you while you're shitting. For dual shitting. We're bringing in the pro to examine the double toilet situation. Oh. <laughs> well, obviously, one for her and one for him. <laughs> Last time I saw that was in prison. <laughs> But before we hear some closing arguments on this camera, I'd like to first thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, for their ongoing support. Need a website fast? Let me introduce you to your new best friend, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features the ability to truly unlock your creative potential. If you'd like to turn your business, hobby, or career into something greater, you can start building your online empire through various available modules like Member Areas, a monetized way to give exclusive access to content not otherwise seen by the general public. If you're a photographer like me in need of some internet real estate to build an online portfolio, portfolio, then look no further than the tools available to you through Squarespace. You can get started building the portfolio of your dreams with something called Blueprint AI, a new feature in Squarespace's website building toolkit. Blueprint AI is an automated way to generate the building blocks of your website by answering a few simple questions at the get-go and letting the algorithm figure out the rest for you. With 1.4 billion potential design combinations and the brand new Fluid Engine, a sleek new way to drag and drop elements of your website wherever at your disposal, it basically assures you that no two websites are alike ever. And best of all, if you run into any 
any snags at any point, you can get in touch with Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support or find the answer you need amongst the always available help forums. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So at the end of the day, I think it's pretty obvious that this is not the camera for me. And if it's not pretty obvious to you, you should learn how to read the room. But while it may not be the camera for me, it could be the camera for you. Let's face it, it is an engineering anomaly that the technicians at Olympus were able to cram this many awesome features into a full frame camera this compact. Seriously, bravo to them. They clearly wanted to make something that changed the game and honestly, I think they did, which uh, more or less explains the cult-like status of this machine, if not also for the fact that you can get one of these yourself for less than 200 monies. If you want a small camera for light, low-key, non-intrusive, semi-manual photography, then I can see this camera being for you. I wasn't exactly over the moon with many of the images from this camera. Sure, it was pissing rain the whole time on location, but still. I think I am just gonna stick with my, uh, my Leica M6 at this point, which is kind of a super douchey thing to say. That and it kind of sucks that Olympus made the XA2 and XA3 in different colors. Pure uncut cocaine white, howler monkey anus blue, and doctors don't know red. But they got rid of the rangefinder? What kind of f***ed up era are we living in where I couldn't get the original XA here in Pepto-Bismol pink?